Cheers, everybody. This is Eric. I'm back. It's been a little bit of time, but I'm back, and I'm going to do a video on uh, my brew day and uh, processes that I do and steps and uh, things to look for, things to look out for, and what not to do and to do, and uh, that's coming up next. One of the things I know I've done some videos as far as uh, setting up my preheating and strike water and that kind of stuff, and this is my total volume of water that I'm going to use. It's actually eight and a half gallons. I'm going to do two and a half to strike and six will be for the sparge. So right now I have a mash tun and hot liquor tank and a uh, mash tun has a, about a gallon and a half, two gallons, about a gallon and a half, two gallons of boiling hot water to heat, preheat my two vessels there. That way I don't have to, I'm not going to lose any temperature and that's just for efficiency. Back to my strike water and my mash water. Um, I'm going to heat that up to 162. There it is right there. And I'm really close, so I'm going to be doughing in here just in a minute. And uh, I'm preheating my rims tube, and that's the mash is going to be 152 degrees today. I just stopped and I went ahead and doughed in. And uh, this is what it looks like my rims tube. It's just recirculating through itself. So move this out the way. So it's just recirculating through itself right now. Sorry about the glare. <clears throat> So it's just maintaining that 152 degrees and I just doughed in so I'm letting it sit just for just a few minutes and uh, let the grain bed settle and then I'm going to hook it up and I'll, I'm going to uh, set my grain bed is what I'm going to do and then I'll put my little manifold in and do my little process. So that's uh, what I'm going to be doing next and I'll show you that. Okay so <clears throat> there we go. I just uh, hooked up the rims tube and I put one of these guys on the end of it and uh, diffuser whatever you want to call it this is what I originally started out with when I was recirculating but the cool thing about this is um, the grains not going to plug that up so so right now I'm gonna have some grain spitting through the rims and spitting through the pump so I'm gonna make sure that I recirc just for I'm sorry about that Recirc for a little bit, and then I'm going to hook up this old trusty dusty SS Brutech manifold. And, uh, this guy will sit right on top of the grain bed, and these little holes will get plugged up if um, if you send grain through it. So I don't want that to happen. And how I hook up hose to hose is this little male to male uh, adapter, and I hook two female couplers together, and that's how I make it recirculate. Uh, Brewhardware.com will sell that to you. So it looks like it's pretty good, and I'll open up my ball valve. My ball valve is throttled way back, as you can see. So I'm going to open it up some. It does not want to focus today. There we go. I don't want to put too much air in there to splash in. I don't want to do that hot side aeration. I don't want to have that. So I'm going to shut it down and put my manifold on. All right. <clears throat> Got my little manifold set up here. Let's see if we can pick it up and can just see the see it coming out of there. And the cool thing about this is I can actually touch the grain bed and feel it soft. And it's not uh, compacted or hardened. Just help that efficiency. So the downfall is if my mash becomes stuck, I'm going to scorch the wart. So you got to stay on top of it the whole time. Make sure that you're recirculating the whole time and it's not stuck. So from time to time, I'll give it a little bump. Make sure I'm seeing some flow. Pick it up. And I do leave my lid off to the side. I don't have to. I can peek in from time to time like that. So. I'll show you the next step here in just a bit. Then I wanted to, every recipe that I do, I have this brew day book, brew day. It was a batch, I called it electric juice. It was an eight and a half gallon. It's my grain bill. Always put my hops, how I do my hops. Um, I'll, I'll Whirlpool, because this is a, uh, a New England IPA. So um, a Whirlpool, nine ounces of 
a Citra Mosaic Cascade at uh, 170 degrees, 175 degrees. And there's my dry hop. There's my brew salts. Um, check my pH, my pH meter during my mash. And um, how much I ran off from a mash. I always do uh, strike volume, uh, sparge volume, total. Um, let's see. Estimated original gravity. Uh, 1.50 came in at 1.50. This was uh, a little unusual here. Estimated post mash gravity was uh, 1.046, but it came in at 1.039. And uh, but the OG came in right on target. I, I don't know if I might have had a uh, issue with my refractometer that day or, or what it was, but uh, yeah, it was off, off big time. So, but it came in. OG came in dead on. I was kind of worried about that. Uh, but wasn't too far off. Uh, good thing about about a New England IPA, if <clears throat> if you're coming in light on your OG, you can boil longer, um, and um, you're not gonna because uh, you don't add your hops until whirlpool. So, and then uh, that's what I used WLP 008 East Coast, and then uh, this was a split batch, so uh, eight and a half gallons. So I always do six in in my. Uh, fermenter and then I do two and a half in my little fermenter so experimental so I did this uh, New England IPA with a lager yeast 3470 and I call it a Neeple New England IP lager so two and a half gallons there but uh, that turned out really good um, thing about a lager New England IPA uh, the the hop aroma and uh, flavor it doesn't stick around very long uh, about Three four weeks, it's gone. So it's still there, but it's it's not as it's not what you want for an, uh, New England. But uh, uh, yeah, brew day, brew day book, um, and I always do that. And then I make like if I have a <laughs> killer beer. So that was a blonde. But yeah, just 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 goes back, and I started doing uh, dates and all that on them, and see so I can just started doing the receipts. And, but yeah, that's my brew day book, and that's where I'm at today. While I'm mashing, so I just racked that to keg yesterday, and that's a Hefeweizen. Uh, I just took my yeast starter, because this is a Pilsner, and uh, this is WLP 810. This is that San Francisco yeast, and uh, about blew the top off when I just shook it, so it's a pretty active, uh, yeah, picking up. So this one's... Uh, this yeast is fighting mad, ready to go to a town and uh, consume that sugar in this uh, wort. So, make me some delicious beer. So, here we are, 30 minutes in. I'll slide this over to the side just a bit here. Let's see if I can get my camera to focus. Uh, you can see how clear it is. And, um,. Looking good, and uh, this is going to be a Pilsner. It's going to be fermenting at 55 degrees. All right, mash is complete, and now I'm doing my fly sparge. So I got my pump hooked up to my little bypass coming up, going into my kettle, and here we go. I got that uh, my little hop screen there picking up. Always get uh, grain, always get grain. So I put that hop screen in there. And uh, here we go. Need to open up here just a little bit more. Yeah, I don't have quite enough water. So just started, so 158. That water's in my hot liquor tank is um, 170 degrees so it should continue to walk up and increase in temperature like I'm running off a little quicker than what I should be doing here didn't turn on the didn't turn on my element start firing it up there it goes yeah, I gotta get that water level up need a couple inches in there on top of the grain bed help 
push up that push so 159 degrees that's good all the sugars have been extracted at this point we just want to rinse them really 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 good so that's what we're doing that's the idea of this fly sparge so gravity there to there pumping out there to there so making some uh, sweet work Okay, um, post mash, gravity expected 1.038, came in at 1.037, not bad at all. I'll take that all day in a bag of chips. And uh, just started boiling, added my hops, and uh, there we go. And we're gonna have this dude rocking and rolling before we know it. I'm already set up for my whirlpool. So when I come off, power down, I will uh, start my pump and start whirlpooling, and uh, I gotta cool this one down into the, if I can get to 60, I'll be happy. So I got some ice, an ice bath that I'm gonna use with the, with the little pump uh, through my immersion chiller, and I'll show you that, and that'll be uh, coming up here next. And I'm running at 68% power and a good rolling bowl. Next thing I wanted to show you is a little fountain pump. Got a nice long cord. So anyway, you just submerge it in ice cold water and uh, hook it to your immersion chiller or plate chiller and uh, in a ice bath and <clears throat> that'll run your temperature down to where you need it for pitching. and. Uh, all right, I am done, wrapped it up. I am whirlpooling now. Take my mic here and you hear that. I have this whirlpool port that is, it's turned up just a little bit and uh, it's, it's actually adding oxygen to the wart while it's whirlpooling. So it's kind of one of my methods. I came in at 1.044. Uh, a little high, but that's okay. That's, that's, that's good stuff. Everything was on target. So, you know, uh, if it was way off, then I'd be not happy. But looks so far so good. Everything is working well. And I'm just uh, running from my groundwater right now. I'm at 125 degrees. Like I said, about 75 or so. I'll uh, turn the, turn my water off and hook up to my little pump. I'll dump my ice in there, and we're going to start to ice bath and get her down. But that's it, and um, that's what I'm going to do. So successful brew day. Any questions, comments, put them down below. Don't forget to subscribe. This is Eric. Thanks for watching, and as always, cheers.